Hey guys, coming to the e-trailer and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Global Link Ultra E Pro electronic door lock here on our 2021 Palomino Columbus River Ranch fifth wheel trailer. Having installed a lot of door handles myself on RV, uh, RVs, motorhomes, everything uh, you can imagine, it is super simple. Uh, biggest thing is just making sure that you measure correctly beforehand and pick out the correct door handle. Now, if you do have to opt something a little bit bigger, you can cut out more of your uh, cutout there, kind of just trim it out a little bit more to fit that larger handle that you prefer. But uh, you can't really kind of go back down unless you have a door handle that's also going to have a wide enough front on it to kind of cover up that if you do decide to go smaller. Uh, but other than that, I do like a lot of the features on this. It uh, does light up, so it makes it nice when you're out at the campsite late at night and then you want to go back into your camper. Um, having the keyless option definitely makes it a whole lot better, especially if you're out floating. Then you don't have to worry about losing your key in the river. Um, and then also just how big the door handle it is. If you look at uh, your older style one, all you're really getting in here is just your fingertips. So you don't really get a good grip on that. With how tall this is, it's real easy to kind of pop off of there when you're trying to get a good grip on there and you could actually end up falling off of your steps. Whereas this one, I can get my whole hand in there and really grip onto it. It's a little bit sturdier and just gives you a better option. Uh, one other nice thing about this door lock is that you can also get it key to like. So you can order multiple of these. So you have a travel trailer with a front door and then a rear door where typically it's going to go either into a bedroom or a bathroom. You can get both of those key to like. That way you're not having to fumble around with multiple key sets. Starting off our installation, we're going to have to first remove the inside panel because this is where our mounting screws are going to be. And we'll also need to remove the strike plate on the side here. So I'll go ahead and I'll start with our screws right here. And once we have those screws out, we can go ahead and kind of pop this off. You'll see the only thing holding it is that D-shaped uh, piece right there. That's what kind of clips into our emergency lock right there. We'll set that aside. And we can pull the door in a bit and get the straight plate out of the way. You can see it kind of pop out. So I'm kind of holding the outside as well. That way it doesn't fall down and hit anything. Pop that off and we'll just slip this out the front just like that. And the most common question we get here at each trailer is how do I know what is going to fit my camper door? A lot of people think that it's just gonna be, oh hey, you know, exactly what the year make model of the camper is. There should be some specific fit with it, but no camper manufacturer really follows any kind of code. Really, it's just going to end up being you pop off your door handle and then just measure that cutout hole. So if I take my tape measure, I can see that I have roughly two and three quarters inch uh, width. And for our height, we got about three and a half. Now with our new door handle, height wise, it's going to require right at three and a half by two and a half. So we know this is gonna fit inside our hole, so we can go ahead and pop it in there. And I am gonna start by putting in the outside exterior portion of it because that's where it has our uh, door strike. We're gonna go ahead and slip it in. And now since this one is electronic, it's gonna have this little wire harness. We'll wanna slip that in first. So I'm gonna pull that through, kind of angle that in place. That way we can connect the two together. Once that's in, we can go ahead, we'll slip on that strike plate, and then we're gonna put our screws in, and that's gonna kinda help draw this into place and keep this nice and secure, so when we go to put on the inside piece, it's not gonna be wobbling around or loose. We'll slip our plate into place. You kinda just let that hang while you grab your screws. It's gonna be the two smaller screws that you have in there. Just pop that in, and you'll wanna kinda hold on to it. Just get it started before you fully get it on and put in the other one. And now we can fully tighten it down. Now with our interior plate, we're gonna have to make sure that we angle our uh, lock here. This is basically your deadbolt, just so that it matches up because it does have a D shape to it. We wanna make sure that we're matching up to that. And we also need to hook in our wire harness. So we'll pop those together. And you can kind of just push that up out of the way and work this into place and then spin this around so you get it to match up with the 
deadbolt on there. And we're going to want to make sure that we have this handle closed when we stick it on there. So I'm going to pop that back off and get that popped back in place. There we go. So if you have that handle open, it's not going to be able to actuate the door lock at all. Let's see, now we can. So we can go ahead. I'm just going to hand thread in our mounting screws just a little bit. Get those started so that we don't have to hold this as tight. Push our door lock out of the way. And then we can come back with our drill and tighten them up. Now they do give you a new strike plate with the door handle, but I find that a lot of times um, the door frame itself kind of sits a certain way so that striker comes up and hits in a certain spot and kind of starts to bend it a certain way. So you can see right here where the old one was kind of bending it to fit correctly inside of this door frame. So I'm gonna leave that alone. If it was damaged, I'd go ahead and replace it, but then you might have to kind of play around, maybe moving it kind of back or forth or up or down to kind of get it to sit exactly where it needs to so that the door fully closes and uh, kind of butts up against the gasket that goes around the frame. But you can go ahead and play with that yourself. Like I said, it's not really too hard. It's just gonna be two screws. Just pop those right out and you can pop new ones right in with your uh, strike plate on here, but it is not going to give you the screws for this because they don't know exactly what you're drilling into. The last thing we need to do is just pop open our little cover right here. That's where our battery is going to be housed. We need a small screwdriver. I'm going to be real careful we don't lose this screw just because of how small it is. Pull that through. And then you're going to need a C123 battery. Pop that in place. And we can put our cover back on. So on the inside of your door handle and as well on the instruction sheet that's in your box, it's going to give you the key code number and then it's also going to give you the pin code for your specific lock. Now these are all going to be keyed differently so you don't have to worry about running into somebody with the same one. Um, a couple other features on here, you're going to have your deadbolt lock. That's going to prevent this from being able to open. In the event that maybe this broke and you can't really turn it, there's also this little slide right here. If you slide that over, it's gonna allow you to still open this while it's locked. Um, and then also up top here, you're gonna notice that there's a little uh, button per se right here that you can kind of see lighting up anytime that you'll have a low battery. And if you notice that they've double printed everything, that's because this door handle can be put in either orientation, whether it be left hand or right hand. To give you a little bit of a functionality test here, what we're gonna do is we'll close it. We're gonna hit the one, two, and three, four buttons at the same time to lock our door handle. You can hear it go on and all these numbers kind of light up a little bit. And see now, I can't open that at all, it's locked. So then we can go ahead and enter in our code. Now it isn't going to be a double press to get to that second button, you're only going to press it once. So if I enter in my code, uh, first we'll light up the screen that's showing that it's actually awake and then it's going to beep at you as you hit these and then it unlocks and we can open up our door handle now you are still going to have that key option in case your battery ever dies on here but we can go ahead and also lock it and we're nice and secure so if there's a specific four digit key code that you'd like instead of just that default one you can also go ahead and change it there's going to be a little list inside of your instructions that'll tell you exactly how to go through and reset that code to exactly what you want it to be. Well, I think about does it for today's installation of the Global Link Ultra E-Pro electronic door lock here on our 2021 Palomino Columbus River Ranch fifth wheel trailer. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.